Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Life of Wonders. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Polo and I love making videos of those stories and Disney collectibles. So if you like this kind of content, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't be missing out on any of my future videos. Today we're going to be doing the unboxing and the detailed review of the last release as part of the Disney Designer Collection Ultimate Princess Celebration line and it's time for Cinderella and here we have the outside of the box which is very pretty um, I would say it's one of my favorites for sure because uh, it has a magical component that it's like uh, they've presented as with the sketch of the pumpkin and then they've transformed it for the icon that they are actually incorporating in all the boxes and this time is the uh, final carriage or the iconic Cinderella's carriage uh, and that is just super magical to me and then the color is also um, very beautiful it's like an aqua color uh, mixing up like blue green a hint of um silver in a way and then the ombre effect isn't as accentuated when compared to other releases in which all the borders were super dark so these box seems to be lighting up in a way um and it's just like again truly magical then we have the disney designer collection logo in the center um the pumpkin and carriages all around uh in that corner we can read that it's for ages six and up and in this one over here uh the limited edition one of 9800 and then if we um look at the sides we can see cinderella's name and then a little bit of a crown or tiara over there at the beginning and then more pumpkins and then in the other um side we find the pumpkins again uh with little stars like um sparkling <laughs> uh magic uh vibes all around and then cinderella is farther down and then i will show you now uh what we can find on the back of the box so this is the back of the box and as always um it includes a bit of an introduction um that relates to the whole collection and then a little bit of a background story that relates to the designer that has uh particularly and specifically uh designed this door um and that is just so so cool i always find it very um I don't know very helping and encouraging in a way and so we have the name that we saw earlier father back and it's just like very coherent it's very i mean i love this color uh blue is my favorite color but this blue greenish um aqua color is just so so pretty and then we have the draping of the motifs on top a picture of daria uh vinogradova um that is uh the designer behind and i'm and then i'm going to be reading out loud what it says um just in general so uh disney designer collection is proud to introduce the ultimate princess celebration a limited edition monthly series carefully crafted by artists across the Walt disney company each doll celebrates a disney princess and the designer inspired by our heroine's story this one-of-a-kind collection is destined to be a keepsake for fans and collectors alike Daria Vinogradova is a design manager and artist for the Walt Disney Company and heads up a team of product designers working on many magical products. Growing up in Rybinsk, Russia, Daria remembers Walt Disney's Cinderella uh, being the first Disney film she saw. The movie inspired Daria's love of uh, drawing and creating, so much so that um, it let her designing hundreds of paper dolls and thousands of fashions for them. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, her projects were always spread out all over the floor. Just ask her mom. Um, 
the iconic transformation scene in Walt Disney Cinderella is what inspired Daria uh, to design this Disney Ultimate Princess Celebration doll. In the animated classic, that moment was visually stunning and incredibly magical as it finally let Cinderella shine on the outside as brightly as she shone within. Um, super cute and adorable so now i will show you how the doll is displayed uh with the window display and everything else and here we can finally uh see and appreciate these ah absolutely stunning doll um she's just so awesome you guys seriously um she has to be one of the highlights um, within this collection and as I think that the designer has done well every single designer um, you know has done a, a, an incredible job to um, celebrate each individual princess but for Cinderella even though she isn't like my favorite princess um, I, I can't uh, stop um loving her so much because um they have elevated um the concept that we have in our minds of Cinderella um I don't know being released many many years ago in the 50s um in the middle of the 20th century and um and I mean, the designer has brought her directly to the 21st century um, in 2022 and she's as fashionable and as relatable and she represents everything that we associate with Cinderella, but she's elevated her a little bit to be uh, more daring and more contemporary which is uh one of the reasons uh this um whole collection was released is to to update the image of all the princesses um into the be brave and kind sort of slogan uh behind it um so anyway here is the window display um it's very beautiful um the only um gold details that have been um added to the dis window display or the displaying window are those little stars like little sparks and those are just too magical and then we find um the castle as it's seen from um I think the perspective of the tower where she's held um, as I do have a tapestry uh, as part of my collection as well that has that specific sort of like perspective and it looks so so magical with the blues like even though there is a lot of blue here the blue that we will find on her uh, outfit it's an aqua with a hint of like very very subtle green in my opinion um and then the blue on the background it's a much more um darker uh blue with white and it still contrasts uh really really well uh both things together um and then on this side over here we have um the pamphlet um with on the one side we will find the staircase um and then on the other side we find a sketch of the um designer that made for for the door um then on this side over here we find a certificate of authenticity with the limitation number so right now i will just proceed to take her out of the box and give you all the details well, and before I continue, I just wanted to share with all of you uh, very briefly uh, how she's displayed uh, inside of the box because, it, I mean, she's really breathtaking and the way the outfit is displayed, pinned down to the stairs, the background of the castle um, and the pose, uh, she's striking and um, the way the overskirt um drapes down it's just magnificent really um so i will unbox that completely but i wanted to share how she's displayed um because it i mean she looks amazing and um yeah 
hope you like it as much as I did. Um, and then I'll be back in no time with all her details. And well, I also wanted to share with all of you the back ground that they've chosen without the stars um so we can appreciate a little bit more um the whole view um with the village uh on this side around here and then the castle in the back is very very magical and i love this scene or this perspective of the castle um and now yeah it's time for um giving you all the details of the doll well and here we finally have her um and i have decided to display her like this so we can appreciate all her details um best um against the wall and um standing up because otherwise we would miss a few of the things um as you can see um again in or um out of the box she looks absolutely stunning um and i am just so in love she's having that daring sort of like um almost like um yeah being aware that uh she's been watched uh so um maybe striking a pose on the red carpet look um and that shows a lot of confidence uh she has a uh, one of the eyebrows uh, lifted and in my opinion she looks absolutely gorgeous and another thing that I uh, very much like in particular um, in this doll is the hairdo um, I don't know if you can appreciate it all um, but uh, her hair is very platinum blonde um, a little bit more platinum than what we're used to maybe uh, but still Cinderella's blonde in my opinion um, although it contrasts very much with her eyebrows because the eyebrows are quite thick which adds to the contemporary you know current look of the princess of as if um, she was actually um right now with us in 2022 uh which is great and then the hairdo um the designer has managed to actually because the story is set to be in the 19th century um so 1800s um and i think that the hairdo she's chosen perfectly fits that time period at the same time that it fits the 50s or 1950s period uh, which is uh, the time um, by you know um, the time in which the movie was released and it also fits the current times really well so it's a hairdo that could definitely uh, pass in the mid um, 1800s as well as 1950s and as well as now uh, and that is just so cool and um, she's added um, the little birds um, well I'll show you in a little bit like I will uh, show you the back uh, but both little birds are actually holding those two chains and then it has like a massive um, down Fun, um with her hair which is not gelled at all i mean i have uh sorry that i lost focus um so um i touched it all around and she does not have a single bit of gel so it's held really nicely with a piece of thread and i would be very careful because again it's not like one solid piece um her face is just like awesome and then i also love the jewelry um that she's wearing and um by jewelry i mean well i think that the chains adorning her hair uh, are part of that but the earrings are particularly um awesome they're round um and they have this iridescent 
um, effect on it. And to me, they remind me of the bubbles um, that appeared um, in the first plane of the animation where she was like washing the floors by hand um, in that scene um, in the manner. And I think it's the way it's been incorporated because to me they look like bubbles and, and then they have this iridescent um, touch to them. And then the rest of the outfit is a two-piece um, outfit. So the main piece is a jumpsuit that connects the top with the pants in one single piece. And then it has this overskirt that is so beautiful. It has two shades of blue. Um, it, there is a darker one on the inside uh, in this satin material and a lighter one on the outside. And then the jumpsuit, um, I actually wish it would have um, part, parted in two pieces, like the top in a bodice and then the pants for a mix and match combinations. Uh, but actually it's very good the way it is as well. So um, it's the same shade of the overskirt on the outside and then it has a gorgeous embroidery detail all around and the pants are very very tight um, and then um, for the top um, we find this chiffon or organza material adorning um, the sleeves and then this futuristic cut um, that again futuristic um, I I just refer to that as such because uh, we always set her in a period of time in the past uh, whether it is in relation to the, the time it was set or whether it, it is because she was released in the 1950s um, it's, but, but this cut it's definitely current I would say or modern um, and that is um, what when I mean futuristic I mean that um, and then she has this um, short sleeve uh, cut that is really cool as well and the high neck uh, cut as well and then it has this sweetheart shape for the um, bodies um, and then it, it goes all the way down to those shoes that we're going to see in a moment. Now, having said all this, I also have to say that um, the only disappointment or the only crazy fact um, that I find on this so sad, in a way, is this um, clock-shaped uh, watch. Uh, sorry, uh, clock-shaped uh, handbag, which is very beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. Um, it has the same uh, pearly effect as the bubbles and um, a little bit of that we can find uh, on the platform shoes as well. And then it has these two pieces of ribbon and two chains um, draping down that are super beautiful. But then the only thing that in my mind and I had not realized about it um, till I was actually unboxing her um, is that the numbers are I, I really don't get them <laughs> I think there's been an error there um, somehow and um, probably is not easy to notice if you're not like I don't know um, Part of me, you know, I'm a scientist in a way, and um, and I couldn't resist it. And I think that um, the the numbers are referred to as Roman numbers, and for for some reason, the number one is number one, the number two is number two, the number three is the corresponding number three in Roman numbers, and number four can be addressed like that. Although in clocks sometimes it's used as for um, for little um, like like actually like the twelve um, sometimes that is what um, the way is depicted in in many clocks around the world. Although not all of them, I think. Um, when we look at the Big Bang, um, in the, the Big Bang in London, um, it still conserves um, the um, 
that number over there and then it should be like a v which isn't and all of a sudden we find um number seven in my opinion then we we get a symbol that i don't recognize at all um it seems to be like a w um so crazy and then basically what we find is a mirror image of these ones here so i don't know that i mean no um no i don't i, I don't know I, th there is something wrong there and then okay you you can think that maybe those four uh little sticks are represent um i don't know um no, I don't know what they represent. Um, they, it should be like an X and two little stakes to to represent the 12. Um, but anyway, I, I really don't know what happened in production. Uh, but something clearly happened here that was not revised. And, and then they created these, you know, one of a kind sort of like a uh, clock. Um, yeah, handbag. <laughs> anyway, it's very beautiful though. Uh, it's just that um, if you if you if you notice it, um, then you cannot unnotice it. <laughs> but other than that, it's very very beautiful. Um, and then the points of articulation for her. Um, I have lost focus. Just okay. The points are shoulders, elbow, wrist, um, and then she has bent and snap knees. Um, and now what I will do is like I will try to turn her around so I can show you the back um, efficiently and then I will show you her shoes. Okay, so here we can see the back of it and it's just stunning. Uh, really, I love it. Um, so the overskirt goes all the way up to almost her um, shoulders and and then it has this all round uh shape and then this over um um silhouette as well as a, a triangle and then it has these um vertical lines as part of the pattern and and then not only just the lines but we can find like little stars um here and there um, and then the letter C is embroidered right at the end of it and it really looks so cool and so magical and it almost gives you that sense of having that silvery color that sometimes we appreciate in the original classic uh, but I'm telling you it isn't silver it's like I mean I think it has a hint of metallic something and but it isn't silver it's it's definitely blue aqua color um but it gives you that impression and then here we can appreciate um her her style much better than before and as i told you it's all super soft so it does not have gelled holding um the whole thing and it looks pretty cool and to me and i previously said this before uh it reminds me of um christina aguilera bionic album pictures uh because yeah i mean i it really reminds me of that i i, I don't think i i have a picture of christina from the back but for, from the front it really lo it does look like her in a way um, and as you can see here, even though her hair is very platinum blonde, it isn't like as, you know, incredibly white. It's still like a blonde that we would associate with Cinderella that sometimes, or I think that from the, from the front, um, you might notice the differences because of the thick eyebrows, but from the back, I think it's just like about the normal sort of like uh, hair color that we get for her in the classic dolls. And then here we can appreciate both little birds holding those chains that are draping down and um, seriously just so gorgeous. And now I will uh, flip her around, I will take the outer skirt and then I will um, show you her platform shoes. 
Wow, and here we can appreciate the jumpsuit without the overskirt that we've actually placed on one of the sides here. And as you can see, it kind of looks like a cloak or a cape. And actually, uh, Mario from M Disney 200, which is uh, a channel that I definitely, uh, it has to be a must for me. Um, he's so amazing. Um, actually tried this piece as a cape on her and it looked completely I don't know fitting um and I actually wonder what it would look like on a prince and I might try that out uh later on and I will share it with all of you uh but it's a really nice and interesting versatile piece um and then here we have uh Cinderella and we can again appreciate the whole uh jam suit piece that is just one piece all together one thing that i also notice is that um there are functional pockets on both sides which the which is an amazing detail um to be honest and then uh, it just looks so to me it looks the most um high fashion outfit um so far for in this collection in a way i mean it's hard to say this. I mean, it wouldn't be fair for, for the rest of the designers, but to me, it kind of looks something, um, I don't know. I don't know. Cause I also love Jasmine, for example. Um, but this one, it's a very, again, it's a very, um, complete outfit that can be turned to be something different. It's very versatile. That that's what I mean in a way. And also very, very stylish. Um, yeah um something that it could be worn by anybody for either a special occasion or just like you know being all uh, dressed up in a way without i don't know this could be a working look as well in my opinion and um and then we can appreciate the embroidered details all around and all through it and then on both sides of the pants we find all these uh, individually placed rhinestones or gems that actually reflect uh, all different colors so they're white and uh, they reflect different colors depending on the light and that is amazing as well and that reminds me of the lines that were adorning the uniforms of the princess or royalty um, male uniforms back in the 1800s um, again which is where I placed Cinderella's story and that goes on on both sides and then we end up with these gorgeous um, and very unique um, like platform um, shoes that I mean, the heel is kind of connected to the rest of the shoe, and it all uh, like it, it has this iridescent color as well going all through it. Um, that almost make you. I mean, it reminds me of the uh, prism uh, effect that we find um, on the shoes from the life action, but in reality, there's no um geometrical cut on them it's just the reflection of it that gives you that illusion and then it's all connected and they're rather unique again um because they have a platform which uh makes them so much more contemporary than the usual cinderella shoes and then the fact that the heel is connected to the rest of the shoe is just so amazing as well. So what can I say? I mean, this doll has it all, in my opinion. I really can't wait for Belle uh, to be released. But um, so far, this one um, has definitely uh, won the 10 out of 10 um, when I compare her with with the rest of the dolls even though i like them all so much in fact my favorite i think it has to be tiana and merida and then jasmine because i'm biased <laughs> uh there but this one seriously is just so 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 amazing so i hope that you've enjoyed um this review and if you have uh don't forget to like the video 
uh, subscribe to the channel, comment down below your thoughts, feelings, opinions, everything, as I will be super happy to read uh, what you think about it. Um, and I will definitely try to get back to all of you. Uh, and for now, stay safe and I'll see you all very soon. Bye bye.